now going to David Ike for an abbreviated 30-minute interview because he's got stuff he's got to do. David, you're in New Zealand, right? Yes, mate. I arrived uh, literally a few hours ago, so I've not had a lot of sleep. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the last uh, stage of a, a Australian... Uh, New Zealand speaking tour, which has been unbelievable. If only one who wants to uh, have confirmation that the world is waking up, just not parts of the world. They should have been with me in the last seven weeks. I mean, when you get 2,000 people turning up at one event in a, in a place called the Gold Coast uh, in Australia, you know, given that I've been here a few times and talked to a phone box <laughs> uh, often uh, before, you know that there's a wake-up going on worldwide. Well, there certainly is. I mean, I'm seeing this 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 wake up worldwide. People who aren't well known or whose faces aren't aren't recognizable kind of feel like they're alone. But when you are a David Icke or a George Norrie uh, or an Alex Jones, you do run into the people. And I'm telling you, David, 10 years ago, maybe one out of 15 people I walked by on a street anywhere in the U.S. would stop and talk to me. Now it's every four or five. I can't go out in public now. And I must be wild for you. And it's not, oh, look, we're well-known, we're celebrities. You were a celebrity before you even got involved in this stuff, champion goalie, national TV host, head of the Green Party. But are you not seeing the same thing now, the feedback? And I think it's important for those of us that are recognized to be able to tell the public the dominoes have already fallen. That's why the elite's getting ready to start all these new wars. David, what's happening in Europe with the Vatican calling for world government, global currency, the open call for Israel to attack Iran? It seems like the quickening is upon us. Yes, yes, it is. I mean, there, there comes a point, uh, I said it years ago, when when something's uh, being manipulated covertly into place, uh, that can go on for a while. But there comes a point where the, the new society that you want to introduce has to break the surface where it can be seen. And that's what we're seeing now, this window of opportunity where... It's not sometime over the rainbow anymore. It's not this is coming if. It's, it's here. It's how deeply are we going to allow it to go in and, and, and how much are we going to uh, you know, pull it back from where it's uh, already uh, got. And so um, we're now seeing the real blatant uh, unfolding and, and calling for this whole structure of global fascist centralized control that we've been talking about all these years. And I think there's another thing here as well, which I've been aware of, uh, Alex, uh, for a, a long, long time. And that is that as this awakening it more and more manifests itself, and although, you know, these protests around the world, uh, lots and lots of people involved, fantastic that they're doing that, but they have to get streetwise to the game that, that's, that's being played, otherwise the game will play them and use their genuineness to do it. But this awakening is reaching the point where a massive Rubicon has been crossed. It's like uh, in, the, in the Matrix movie where, where Neo is, is asked to, to accept the fact that he's a slave. That's the big, big Rubicon. Okay, I, I understand my situation. I'm a slave. Next thing, I'm not having it anymore. And, and this is where uh, these uh, protests, the, people, the genuine people out there around the world doing this, they've, they've crossed that line. I realize I'm a slave. I realize the world is deeply corrupt beyond anything I, I thought before, and I'm not having it. Now the next stage is to, is to get streetwise, because if, if that doesn't happen, then you can uh, get manipulated into calling for things that that force which you are out there challenging actually wants to introduce. And so what we're seeing, for instance, now in Europe is um, the, 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 the euro uh, being basically attacked because of a simple reason. People say, well, it's not good for the euro that it's not working. It's, it's not supposed to work. They want a one world uh, single electronic currency. Therefore, they have to make currencies in all the forms that they are now not to work so they can offer the solution and the solution until they get to that point of a single electronic currency. So what the euro has been is a stalking horse. Um, all over Europe, you had the lira, the franc, the Deutschmark, all these different currencies. Now, if you want a one world currency, you've got to mop them up. And if you're going to mop them up one after the other, you know, in terms of individual countries, then it's going to take you a long while. So you introduce a single currency for all those former 
multiple cu- cu- currencies in Europe, and you introduce the euro. Now the lira's gone, the franc's gone, the Deutschmark's gone. You can one fell swoop, you've done it. You know, apart from one or two like Britain, I still have the pound. But then next stage. You've got to make, eventually, the euro not work, because that's not your end, end product. Your, your single electronic currency is your end product. And thus, um, we're seeing the undermining of the euro. Uh, I'm not saying it will disappear tomorrow, but it will disappear eventually. And for it to disappear, it's got to be made not to work, and for people to think something has to replace it. And that's, that's the way we're going all, all over the world. And when you, you've got the Vatican, which is the Church of Babylon relocated, I mean, you do the historical research the church of babylon relocated to rome they just changed the names and and so it's absolutely in line with the whole plot that um the a, a vatican organization would come out and 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 join george soros and all these other uh people uh, calling for a uh, a central uh, bank a world central bank and this is the big point alex in terms of the protesters because i've seen some of this over the last few weeks where people are being manipulated to, uh, some of them anyway, to call for some kind of democratic world uh, authority to, to, to uh, take over the, 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 the banks, uh, you know, democratic control of the banks and all this stuff. It's a scam. It's what they want. I mean, let's just analyze this. Um, we have got into this mess of, of, of the control of the few over the many in a simple process, the constant, incessant centralization of power in all areas of our lives. They gave it a name decades ago, globalization. That's just the agenda unfolding. So we got into this situation because control of the banking system is in the hands of so few people. Therefore, the, the few dictate and run the, the, uh, the financial system for the many. This is where this whole thing about the 1% and the 99% has come from. You look at uh, a government, centralization of power, centralization of power in Europe now, because the European Parliament's just a, a talking shop to give the illusion of any kind of democratic uh, you know, process in the European Union. It's dictated from Brussels by uh, dark suits that are appointed by the cabal. So uh, now the central uh, few in Europe are dictating to the whole European population that are involved in the European Union. And so we're in this mess now where... Countries like Greece cannot individually respond to their problems. They, they have to do it uh, collectively through this centralized organization because they're all members of the same currency, the euro. And where I'm going with this is this. We have got into the situation that has got people onto the streets of the world for the incessant centralization of power. So are we going to say the answer to that is even more centralization of power. Let's talk here, take it on to a global level now. Instead of having a European central bank dictating the, the, the economies and currencies of Europe, let's have a world central bank, and then they can, that can, they can do it to every country in the world. It's the other way, surely, we need to go. Um, when the cabal has spent centuries and more incessantly centralizing power in the world, it's because it suits them. It's because the more you centralize power, the more power the few have over the many, and the more you centralize power, the more power you then have to centralize even quicker. This is why the speed of, of globalization, as it's called, has got quicker and quicker and quicker. So they want to go incessantly towards centralization of power on a global level. Therefore, we the people, surely, want to go the other way, where people in their communities are having a say uh, uh, in the decision-making over their communities, where there's such diversity of power that no central cabal can run a state, never mind a country, never mind a world. This is the way we need to go. And I, I just say this to the people on the streets in the, in the protest. If anyone comes along, organizations or, or, or individuals or whatever, and they're calling for a centralization of power on a global level to solve the problems, problem, reaction, reaction, solution that these people are protesting about, then they're either completely ignorant of the way the game is being played and where the game wants to go, or they are manipulating you on behalf of the game. David, very powerfully said, and, and that's what the Trilateral Commission said they would do in the 70s, and it's so transparent to those of us that are awake that we see clearly, they always hold you hostage and say, give more centralization to us. 
And then the crisis only gets worse, and they say, okay, now I've got you deeper in. Give us more. Exactly. But these vampires are being exposed. I mean, I'll tell you now, Jesse Ventura is trying to get a hold of you, and a lot of his material he wasn't convinced of, but the deeper he gets into it, you know, he's looking at the fact that they're trying to suppress what you're doing because it could end the whole existing religious order. So I do, when the interview ends, want to try to give you uh, their number so they can hopefully interview you, even if it's for Skype, for the TV show. And in the TV show, you know, I'm not naive like I was 12 years ago and turned the punch, punch bowl, but I, I play devil's advocate. I say people didn't believe what David Icke had to say before, and some would say that it makes us feel powerless, that it's this off-world power. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of credence to what he has to say, so you need to talk to David Icke. You know, I've been interviewed by him, and I send them to you, so I, so I hope that... That happens because you know that's 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 part of their whole research. They, I know you're very busy, but yeah, I, th I think actually, uh, Alex, I'm going to talk to them later today, which is, which will be good. You know, I, I listened to an interview you did with Fritz Springmeier the other day, um, but, and I, you know, I've, I've see what what's happened to Fritz and stuff. And I met Fritz a long, long time ago, and and this stuff that you know we've been talking about about the the Satanism, the 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 worshiping of the gods, the blood drinking, and all that stuff. Um, the, 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 did you know they've confirmed in Canada? I'm going to just interrupt you. This yeah, is in like the, the Globe and Mail and Toronto Star that at these reservations, over half the kids were being killed. And now they have witnesses that say the Queen of England 30 years ago was there and took 10 kids with her. I mean, this yeah, is in the Canadian that. news. This is crazy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I saw that, Alex. And, of course, uh, at least a number of the witnesses that, that, Are dead. Said that they saw them are no longer alive, you know. I mean, it's funny. I've been in Australia, and um, I, I, I offered the Queen a ticket, but she didn't turn up because she was <laughs> out here at the same time, right? Um, but she was getting into Satanism, and I interrupted you. Yeah, she was having a walkabout in Melbourne when I was there. It was hilarious, really. But um, the, And you see people bowing to them, and there, there was this, this uh, uh, controversy and scandal that the Prime Minister of, of, of Australia didn't curtsy when she met the Queen. I mean, you, it's unbelievable that the, the level of childishness that, that, that some people in this world are involved in. But the thing about Satanism, it's a, it's a wider point, Alex, really, and, and I completely understand it. And this is why the challenge now for people who are waking up to, hey, the world's not like I thought it was, we, it is a real challenge to way open the mind. It's like Socrates in ancient Greece is supposed to have said, wisdom is knowing how little we know. Well, you know, it's not that you believe everything, you don't, but, but you don't dismiss things by reflex action just because they're so different, because this is the point. The, the difference between the world that we're sold through our lives, through the media and the education system and all the rest of it, the world as it works and, and what's going on, the powers that are deciding things, is so unbelievable, breathtakingly, staggeringly different to the world that's really going on in the shadows and what's going on in the shadows. But that chasm is, is a real challenge for people to, to, to leap, to, to think from their perspective of a lifetime about this is how the world works this is how i've always understood it to leap into what's actually going yeah, on yeah we're it's investigating that chasm yeah it is it's a, it's, a, it's a major challenge but we need to do it because the rabbit hole is very very deep and the deeper you go in the rabbit hole not only do you understand so much more what it's like is when we are looking at the banking scams and the political scams and the engineered wars and all these things that, that need to be exposed and we're all doing our best to do it, symbolically, we're actually looking at a movie when it's hit the screen. What, when you go deeper in the rabbit hole and deeper in the rabbit hole, you get closer and closer to the projector that's projecting onto that screen. In other words, all the stuff in the background that manifests plays out as men in dark suits uh, manipulating the banking system and, and, and uh, orchestrating 9-11 and all that and that stuff and the people in the military doing that and intelligence. Um, and, and so you get closer and closer, not only to understanding the real force behind the, the, the world that we experience every day, but also the answers to it, how to unravel it, because that's where the answers lie as well. And these people... Um, have been involved in satanic ritual, these bloodlines, right back to the ancient world for a long time because of the way uh, you, 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 humanity in general had, uh, you know, its attitudes at that time. They, they did it openly. They, they did, you know, open sacrifices to the gods.